something that we talked a lot about because we met in we met like in 2019 maybe or 2018 but we really met in 2020 so in 2020 there was the boom of, of bitcoin which i think might have been like the third boom of bitcoin because i remember 2010 or maybe 2009 there was a lot of bitcoin conversation and then 2016 i think when bitcoin hit 10,000 that yeah. was another like milestone moment and then 2020 now all of a sudden everybody's talking about bitcoin but now it seems like the conversation's a little bit dead what do you think about bitcoin is bitcoin dead no calvi bitcoin is not dead uh I don't know. It's it's showing some definite staying power. I mean, it's been around for what almost fifteen years, okay. something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it went up to sixty nine thousand. Yes. And now it's at like below twenty. It's like twenty five. Okay, it's at yeah. twenty five. Yeah. So with it being at twenty five, the conversation is not the same as it was during the pandemic when everybody was throwing money in Bitcoin. All of a sudden, we saw all these. Bitcoin like investors and everybody's telling you how to how to do it right. Yeah. You know? So right now yeah. with the conversation kind of being dead, it seems like Bitcoin is is gone. But I remember one time you told me that Bitcoin comes in in cycles, which appears to be true. Yeah. So talk to me about that. Like, are we expecting a, another boom soon, or how do we predict it? Yeah. I mean, I'm expecting another boom. Um, but if you look at Bitcoin, it kind of it grows actually with the money supply you track it to you know how much the fed prints um the more money supply that gets pumped in it pushes bitcoin up uh on top of that bitcoin has you know the four-year halving cycle where it cuts the supply given to miners by uh, by half by 50 percent uh so pretty much it's cutting it's cutting that supply down every four years. I have a question about the fact that it's tied to the money supply. Yeah. So if it's tied to the money supply and Bitcoin is supposed to be something that's like an alternative to money, if I'm getting that correct. So it's like the government free version of money. Right. But it still is most valuable when the government plays a role in Bitcoin. So how detached really is Bitcoin from the government? It's it's detached in the sense that the software behind Bitcoin, as far as I know, isn't controlled by the government. Although I've heard, you know, things in the interweb okay. where <laughs> it was a CIA created <laughs> asset. Okay. Uh, but as far as I can tell, you know, it's running as its own separate software detached from the government or any singular entity. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, it's detached, but it's also tied to the economy in the sense that the reason why the value of the asset goes up is because there's higher demand in purchasing bitcoin from people retail investors or soon to be you know large funds um they have to pump money into it to purchase it which pushes the price up right mm -hmm. so in that sense it is attached to the economy and the economy is directly affected by money supply aka you know printing or um printing by the federal reserve Okay, I have I have a question about that. So uh, I have two questions. The first one is, could there ever be a place where the economy is booming? There's a lot of money floating around and ever and uh, people are doing well, but Bitcoin is also not doing well. Could that ever happen? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, so far since the beginning of Bitcoin's existence, we've been in monetary expansion. There hasn't, only until last year really did the Fed really push for higher interest rates. I think they did it back in 2018 mm -hmm. and it scared the market and then they relaxed and then we went down to what, 0% in 2020. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, if you look at the graph, literally the 
the interest rates from the Fed have been going down ever since Bitcoin's existence. So Bitcoin's never really existed in a tightening or heavy tightening cycle from the Federal Reserve. Yep. Um, but you're saying if there is continual expansion, could Bitcoin go down? Yeah. I think if there is loose monetary policy with a lot of cash, it will continue to push Bitcoin higher. For two reasons. One, Bitcoin being a hedge against, you know, the devaluation of a currency like the US, right? Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin can be considered a hedge Mm -hmm. to the devaluation of you know, a fiat currency. Yep. Right? Yeah. And um, two, Bitcoin also having to, I guess, I don't know, break a certain barrier when it comes to like money flowing in from uh, from other countries or other organizations that have been barred from investing due to regulation, right? Yeah. So, so those are pretty much the two aspects that can really push Bitcoin's price around in a monetary expansion process, right? Mm-hmm. So if if they're expanding monetary policy, but causing high restrictions to investing in Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. that could push the price of Bitcoin down. Does that make sense, right? Like that would be a case where you could push the price of Bitcoin down, even if monetary policy is expanding. But in general, I think if monetary policy is expanding at a, I don't know, reasonable rate, Mm -hmm. it would push Bitcoin up. Okay, I have way more questions now. So let's start with, um, okay, I'm going to start with this one. What is the actual value of Bitcoin? And, I, and I'm asking you this not as like, what does it cost to purchase a, bit, a Bitcoin? But, you know, when somebody has money and they place it into something, they're expecting that money to do something, whether it's fund someone to come up with a new product or a service so that they can make some money back on that. So what is the actual like value proposition of Bitcoin? Right. So, I mean, the way I look at it is it's it's cryptographic software that that helps people do what it allows an exchange of value through a network that is decentralized Um it doesn't run through like it doesn't run through the current you know network rails that we have today for money i e you know banks uh the way we move money now is through banks and wire transfers and those all run through the i guess the old rails mm-hmm. the old networks that connect all the banks mm-hmm. um across across the world bitcoin being this new network on new rails where you could send value um, through the Bitcoin network. There's no middleman like there is today. Like if I wanted to send you Kelby, I wanted to send you like $5. I'd do it through Venmo and Venmo would send it through its associate banks and it would get to you. Right. Mm -hmm. But I could send Bitcoin to you directly through the Bitcoin network, through your address. So it essentially cuts this middleman out. Um, and that I think is the value proposition of Bitcoin. One of the main value propositions. Okay. And then I'm guessing of all cryptocurrency, not all. Oh, Uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in theory, if it's like, if you're like a fundamentalist in crypto, it's like, yeah, you want it to be decentralized and you want it to be able to move freely without, you know, people in the middle, Mm -hmm. um, except to use it it still kind of has to go through the old chains of like going through the bank, whatever, paying whatever you have to pay, whether it's tax or a fee to get the actual money to use it. 
maybe or if like i don't know if a merchant just has their bitcoin address and you just send your bitcoin send it to straight that. to yeah them. he just yeah. send it straight to their bitcoin wallet is that growing do you think i don't know that's a good question i mean i i would think yeah. i would think okay here's my other question so you said that that bitcoin essentially the value of it goes up with the economy yeah. Right. So right now, what's being told to we the people is that the current day economy is a great one and that uh, there is record low unemployment and most companies are thriving. Now, I personally see a lot of p- companies laying people off, but it is in specific sectors like tech and media. They're cutting a lot of jobs, but that is very, very small because we're in California. A lot of people work in those fields, but the rest of the country appears what they're telling us like database wise is that the rest of the country appears to be doing pretty well so with the stocks up which i think is it's controversial right but with the stock market up and most people are working but bitcoin is down what do you think that that is a result of right so i mean i think it would be you know the interest in money in these various assets, right? Uh, I mean, the reason why the stock market goes up or Bitcoin or any of these assets is because people are putting money into it, right? Yep. They're paying up whatever price for these assets. Uh, If the economy is doing poorly, people have less money to invest right per se right so i don't know like if you make 100 bucks and you just spend all 100 bucks on your you know your day-to-day um lifestyle lifestyle. yeah exactly right Mm -hmm. like how much are you gonna put away to invest right right i mean i think currently right now in in our current state you know if people are losing their jobs maybe there's less money flowing in Mm -hmm. but that's not to say that there's not you know trillions of dollars in the market already by people or I mean larger funds that are investing that are just moving money around mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. I mean if you look at the stock market S&P and Nasdaq have made huge runs I, I don't know you could arguably say it's due to seven companies right yeah like you know Apple some people say five five yeah I mean you, you look at Nvidia and that thing has just gone through the roof but it's like you have to realize that money managers are sloshing money around and pushing that money into certain stocks right so is the stock market storytelling do you feel like you feel like it's just a manipulation of i mean there's a lot yeah 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 yeah, yeah, definitely (laughs) because you know they say numbers lie or men lie women lie numbers don't but it seems like the numbers been lying lately (laughs) (laughs) you know i mean it's just it's a tricky place to be because honestly, yeah, there is market manipulation. Uh, people are large funds with trillions of dollars to move can move the market. They can move company stock, you know, up or down. Mm. Uh, I mean, in general, as an investor, if you're just, you know, a retail investor, you probably just, you want to just probably, I don't know, buy like a S&P 500 index, you know, and just dollar cost average into that, you know. And because at the end of the day, if you look at the U.S. stock market, yeah, it's up and to the right. You know, obviously there's historically. Yes. Yeah. Historically, it's yeah. up and to the right. So if you can just stay in there and stay diversified, you're going to generate a return over your lifetime here's a question for you people say uh we're in late state late stage capitalism and and in some ways i can kind of understand what people are saying because the cost of everything is is beyond what most people feel like they can afford the cost of housing is really high in cities places that people want to live not to say people who are in you know smaller areas don't want to live there but places where there's more population it's really expensive to live there more than ever the cost of food is very high the cost of 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 vehicles are very high so it almost seems like there's not much more 
things can go up without something breaking, um, you know, and then having to start all over again. We've never experienced that. Uh, and I know you said that, you know, historically the stock market goes up and to the right, right? Like with, with reasonable dips. But could we experience something where it falls and tanks for a good period of time just because we need like a financial reset? Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, historically, that's been shown that there are, you know, but what I But what I mean to say is when a country um, heals from its recession, it's it goes up and to the right. And what I'm saying is it doesn't seem like there's much more up and to the right that we can go. For the, for the United States? Yeah. I guess my question to you is... I guess, what is late stage capitalism? Is that what you just defined as? I guess what I can describe it as or define it as is a point where there is massive uh, discrepancies in wealth or, or, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I think I would say. Like, there's there's a small group of people who can afford life, and then a really big group of people that kind of can't. I see. Uh, do you think we're in that now? I don't think we're quite there, because we're not... Uh, there. It's not like a third world country. But I do think, when I think back at how much credit people have, right? Like we're at trillions of dollars in credit card debt, how much debt people have that's like non-mortgage. And I think about the fact that most people are at the brink, Uh, you know, I think the, the, the fact is most Americans don't have a thousand dollars. So when, when you hear those you know, facts and tallies and things like that, you kind of just wonder if things get, 20% 20% more expensive. It's, you know, it cracks. Things crack. Yeah. 30%. Something like that. Yeah. You know? Um. I mean, okay, we could take the most recent recession, right? The... 08? Yeah, the great financial okay. uh, crisis. Or yeah. I think that's what they call it, GFC. Mm-hmm. Um. How how did that ultimately affect the population? The yeah, the population with you know less than a thousand dollars in their bank accounts, right? I'm assuming that those at the top won. They, like, they got bailed yeah. out. They got. They, they're fine. They're either, fine. Either they got bailed out or they committed suicide. Oh, I mean, I don't know the numbers on that, but yeah, it's possible. I mean, yeah, I'm sure in the Great Depression, people were going out. Yes, going out yeah. bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, the question is, how how bad was it in 08? And I don't know what was I like a. Uh, I was like barely in college, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really like fully understand, you know, what people were going through. Yeah. Um, but from the sounds of it, it was really bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did that end capitalism or did that end our country as we knew it? Or it's like, how did that ultimately when we talk about late stage capitalism, right? I'm I'm trying to understand. And it's like, a popular I mean, like, term. I don't I don't personally use it, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, huh? How much more could we push people? Are we talking about like the end of capitalism as maybe as a restart? Huh? Maybe a restart. A restart. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we could look at 08 as a restart, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but can we really though? Because after 08, there's the the like the 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 comeback, I think I would call it like the great comeback, right? And then everything skyrockets. Let's just say you were prepared in two thousand and eight, and you had some money, 
and the recession hit everybody and you bought a bunch of real estate at 80% off. Right. Today, you're a, a multimillionaire. Right. Right? Right. Um, so, wh- yeah, like, it was a recession. Like, things slowed down. Yes. But the rate at which it came back, is that sustainable? That's what I mean to say. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I I think it took us a long, if you're looking strictly at the stock market. I think it I took think like it, 60, or like 52 weeks or something like 50, 60, 60 weeks to get back to where they were and then to go above. Was it? Yeah. Because uh, cause I, I hear Dave Ramsey talk about it all the yeah, time where okay. he's kind From, of like, it you know, a lot of people sold when the stocks were at their lowest. But if you had just waited X amount of weeks, yeah. it would have been right back to where it was, and then it would have been even higher. Correct. So Correct. that's another thing about the stock market, where it's like, I know when Donald Trump was president, people used to say, like, the stock market doesn't determine the economy, right? In a certain sense, that's true, but then right. there's also so much manipulation that happens where it's like, yeah, the stock is up. The company could have just laid off 4,000 people. Correct. You know, yes, And then exactly. now they're just like, we have a profit we're making profit but we're also down (laughs) a ton of employees yes yes. you know yeah cut your costs yeah exactly yeah Yeah. 